Hello, this is Tony Heller from RealClimateScience.com. The U.S. government has officially erased the Dust Bowl of the 1930s. The Dust Bowl was a difficult time with record heat and drought that forced millions of climate refugees from the Great Plains to California. But the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration says this past summer was hotter than the summer of 1936. The lower 48 had its hottest summer on record in 2021. 2021 barely etched out 1936 for the top spot. Summer 2021 was the hottest in 126 years of records for the contiguous United States, according to a report released by NOAA on Thursday. The average temperature for all the lower 48 states from June through August was 74 degrees Fahrenheit, or 2.6 degrees above average. That barely etched out the Dust Bowl summer of 1936 for the top spot. So now let's take a look at the actual data from the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration. The percent of NOAA United States Historical Climatology Network stations which reached 95 degrees Fahrenheit or 35 degrees Celsius sometime during the summer was among the lowest on record. The peak year was 90 years ago when 93% of the United States was above 95 degrees Fahrenheit sometime during the summer. This year was down around 70%. The red dots on this map show stations which reached 100 degrees Fahrenheit sometime during the summer, and the purple dots show stations which reached 110 degrees. Temperatures over 100 degrees were largely confined to the west, with a few locations in the east reporting over 100 degrees. 110 degree temperatures were confined to the desert southwest and to the Pacific Northwest. Now let's compare this past summer to the summer of 1936. During the summer of 1936, almost the entire country reached 100 degrees sometime during the summer, and a large portion of the country reached 110 degrees. During the summer of 1936, 21 states set their all-time record maximum temperature. This past summer, no states broke their record maximum temperature, although it's possible that Washington state tied theirs. So peak temperatures during 1936 were much hotter than this past summer over most of the United States. Now let's look at the frequency of hot days. During the summer of 1936, more than one-third of afternoon temperature readings in the United States were above 95 degrees Fahrenheit. This past summer was among the lowest on record and less than half of what occurred in 1936. This map shows the frequency of 100 degree temperatures during the summer of 1936. The yellow dot shows stations which had between 1 and 9 days over 100 degrees Fahrenheit that summer. The brown dots show 10 to 19 days, the red dots show 20 to 29 days, and the purple dots show more than 30 days over 100 degrees Fahrenheit. As you can see, the summer of 1936 was incomprehensibly hot in the United States. Now let's compare the summer of 1936 to this past summer. The blue dots never reached 100 degrees Fahrenheit, and the yellow dots show 1 to 9 days over 100. You can see that the frequency of hot days in the United States this past summer was much lower than it was 85 years ago during 1936. Yet the U.S. government claims that this past summer was hotter than the incredibly hot summer of 1936. According to the definition from the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration, unusually hot summers are defined based on daily maximum temperatures. The U.S. government claims that the share of U.S. land with unusually high summer temperatures has greatly increased to record highs since the 1960s. But as we've already seen, their own data shows the exact opposite. Since the 1960s, the share of stations reaching 95 degrees Fahrenheit has continued to decline towards record lows. Now let's look at how the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration created this deception of a record hot summer. They define hot summers as being based on afternoon temperatures, but for their fake record hot summer they used average temperatures, which is the average between the afternoon temperature and the nighttime temperature. This graph shows what their actual thermometer data for average temperatures shows. 
1936 was the hottest summer, 1934 was second hottest, and 1901 was third hottest. This year was nowhere near a record. But before NOAA releases their data to the public, they perform massive alterations, which change the graph from this to this. After they alter the data, 2021 becomes slightly hotter than 1936 at 74 degrees Fahrenheit. This is what their press release said. 2021 was slightly hotter than 1936 at 74 degrees. But their report is not based on thermometer data. It's based on altered data which made 2021 the hottest. And this graph shows how they altered the data. They cooled temperatures from 1936 by more than 0.75 degrees and they warmed temperatures from this past summer by almost half a degree. In order to make the summer the hottest on record, they did nearly 1.5 degrees of data tampering in a hockey stick. In this graph, I plot the adjustments along the y-axis and the year along the x-axis. Now let's look at the same graph with CO2 plotted along the x-axis. It's pretty clear what they're doing. They're altering the data to match the increase in carbon dioxide in the atmosphere. They're altering the data to match the theory, rather than making their theory match the data. This is the exact opposite of how science is supposed to be done. But this next graph is the real smoking gun. There are 1,218 stations in the United States Historical Climatology Network. If there isn't any thermometer data from one of those stations during a particular month, NOAA calculates the temperature using a computer model. From the 1930s through the 1970s, about 90% of the data was real and about 10% was coming from a computer model. But since about 1980, the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration has been losing data at a rather spectacular rate. During this past summer, only 40% of the data came from thermometers and 60% came from computer models. In other words, NOAA's claim of a record hot summer was completely fake. They want people to believe that the data they're using came from thermometers when in fact most of it didn't. Let's look now at the U.S. Weather Bureau maps from the summer of 1936. August of 1936 was blustering hot with parts of the country more than 10 degrees Fahrenheit above normal. July was even hotter. Some parts of the country were more than 12 degrees above normal. June 1936 wasn't as hot as July and August, but it was still incredibly hot over most of the country. Newspapers from the summer of 1936 had some pretty incredible news. The Bend Bulletin, July 25, 1936, heat wave toll over 12,086 cities this week. New York Times, July 7, 1936, crop crisis worse, heat rising to 119 degrees, North Dakota temperature set all-time records and fourth severe day, 31 cities over 100 degrees, Illinois highways blow up in the heat. July 16, 1936, worst drought in U.S. history, millions hit in America. Detroit heat catastrophe, in 14 hour period, one death each 10 minutes is reported in U.S. city. People were dropping like flies and the heat wave was compared to the 1918 flu pandemic which killed 50 million people around the world. The National Climate Assessment from the U.S. government shows that 1936 was by far the hottest summer on record and that heat waves have declined sharply since the 1930s. Note that the graphs from the National Climate Assessment are very similar to the graphs I was showing you earlier. The claims from the U.S. government that summer 2021 was hottest on record and hotter than 1936 are not based on reality. The summer of 1936 was much hotter than this past summer. This is propaganda, it's not science. George Orwell said, The most effective way to destroy people is to deny and obliterate their own understanding of their history. And that's exactly what's being done in the United States. The U.S. government is erasing the Dust Bowl of the 1930s. When I was in high school, students read John Steinbeck's Grapes of Wrath, which documented the exodus from the Great Plains to California during the heat and drought of the 1930s. But public school students don't read Steinbeck anymore and instead are fed propaganda from Al Gore. Toto has been pulling back the curtain on this fraud for the past 13 years. 
You can visit him, Kyrie, and Caesar on the web at realclimatescience.com.